third tone, it will be realized as low, uh, low high, low rising instead of just low. And then, and also one be followed by another non third tone, it will become low falling. So that's the phonological noise. And also, uh, about the card collection period, coming over in fact and anticipatory in fact. And also, typically for memory tones, the karaoke effect is more significant than the anticipatory effect. And so I have done a bit of research about uh, analyzing my students. So I find that you can see this is uh, dice about tones are produced by native speakers. And the first uh, syllable division, you can see there's four different tones, and the second tone is the high tone, high level tone. So you can see the onset of the second tone is really influenced by the offset pitch value of the first tone. So typically you can see one okay, this is high low tone. So this second tone here is should be very high from high level, but it's being dragged down, you can see. So, and also this is one, the second tone is preceded by four tones. You can see there's also different pitch high there. It's really extremely influenced by the onset of the first tone. And also this is the third tone and the fourth tone. So you can see that's pretty strong carryover effect. And also, what about the anticipatory effect? So how the first tone in that level works is being influenced by the second tone pitch either. So you can see it is actually not that limited. So no matter what the second tone the onset pitch height is, the first tone the offset is pretty much the same. And this is for the second uh, the low rising tone is also preserved itself. And also for the third tone, the low tone. And here you may think, oh, it changed a lot. But actually, it's for logical variance. So it's not dramatic. Yeah. And also, this is the first tone. So it's preserved itself pretty well. So the actual anticipatory effect is not very strong. So uh, for the completing and compatible areas, uh, content, if we think about uh, there's four tones in Mandarin, and different tones each have different onset and offset values. So if we think, take that into consideration, so four tones, dice level words will be 16 combinations, right? According to different the offset of the previous value and the onset of the following tone value. There is a mismatch where they are identical the same. So we will anticipate that if in the uh, also is in uh, you have seen it already in the completing contact, uh, context the carryover effect is really strong and also uh, anticipatory effect is also very strong. But in the compatible context, so both of the effects should not be very strong. So the tones should preserve itself original pitch height and original tone value. So if in that consideration, we can pretty categorize the tones according to the onset and offset value of the first and second tone, and we can categorize them into two categories. So that's for each of the 16 combinations. And then for the non-native tone perception and accusation, uh, I really am uh, interested in the, how to our existing knowledge can be fit into the PAM model and the FLM model. Both the models predict that L1 uh, of the phonology really influenced one in the L2 phonology. So basically, uh, American uh, English doesn't have any tone, right? So when they learn L2, which is a tonal language, will be for it easier for what kind of arrows people make. So we will see that. And also, according to previous literature, many studies have been done on the uh, short perception tone training experiment and non-native speaker 
and Mandarin tones and accentuation. So a lot of the literature has already studied that. But what about long-term acquisition process? What about real altitude learners instead of naive listeners? And also what about perceived tones were between tones in dialect? So in the context, which is much more than just the four tones. So, uh, and also about the tone perception difficulties, according to literature, so the high tone is really easy to uh, confuse with the low high tone. And the low high tone is really easy to confuse with the high low tone. And also, this, this two are marking that is very, very notoriously hard to learn and hard to distinguish, such as ma and ma and ma and this is ma. Yeah. So very hard to distinguish. And then my research question is, uh, how about uh, this four character, uh, four uh, what, variables, the monosyllabic and disyllabic tones? Uh, that's the forced syllable and that's the like second syllable and comparable conflicts in context and learning experience through a tone perception task. And also, how about how these four variables will influence the output of the accuracy mean, arrow pattern, and reaction time of their tone perception? And also, because limited to time, I will just report the results on the accuracy means. So my hypothesis is the accuracy, according to uh, about accuracy means, the mod accuracy uh, tone perception of monosyllables will be higher than the disyllables. And also, disyllabic forced syllable tones will be higher than the disyllabic second syllable tone perception accuracy. And in the compatible context, the accuracy will be higher than the conflicting context. And also, more learning experience will be, of course, higher. The accuracy will be higher than the less experience. Will that be true, really? So uh, I recruited about uh, thir uh, 33 uh, participants. So they categorized into three. Uh, experimental groups according to their learning time. So first year, second year, and third year. So the male, uh, there's 18 male speakers and 16 female speakers, and their average is 20. And also, they all L1 English uh, speakers of, of American English. And also, there's one control group and serve as the baseline. They all keep the name of Chinese speakers. So about the student line, I use 32 tokens of the monosyllables. And so basically it's ma, 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 ya, 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 ya. And 128 bisyllabic tokens. So worth to mention that is the old nonsense word. So for example, the white column is the bisyllabic first tone syllable, and green column is bisyllabic. Second tone uh, syllable. So to count because I use number, I want to account for the learning experiences effect because some words they might learn in the uh, higher level, the lower level may not know. And also, I really want to know about their real categorical perception of according to the linguistic view rather than lexical. Also, they have to consider the uh, lexical frequency things like that. I don't want. Uh, so I need to get this model, and so what the speaker will do, they will see these four tone markers. So all the learners, as long as you learn one day of Chinese for one week or one year, you have already acquired these four syllable markers related to each of the tone categories. And then they will target target syllables. So target syllables will be monosyllable, disyllable appear in the uh, disyllable, so where they will be instructed to tell me whether it's the first tone uh, or the second tone. And also, they will answer the tone of the target syllable they just heard by uh, input the uh, push the key on the keyboard. So also corresponds with the tone type. 
so about the result part. So I uh, want to speak the most about hostings. We can see uh, the, this is the four tones in isolation, and here is four groups. So we can see the native speaker group has no really, uh, don't have any difficulty. But non-native speakers, especially the third tone, is really hard for them to learn. And then second tone is big hard as well. So what about the tones in uh, context in decibels? So I also found that the tone uh, is very significantly different and the group is just well and the interaction is significant, but it's not significant. So for the best elaborate response on testing, you can see here is best elastic, best the best the best elastic force tone is the tone one, and this is influenced by the following there's four tones. So you can see this is the accuracy of the first tone when it appears in the desmetric force syllable. You can see that uh, when the combination is one three, it is really false. But uh, one is one two is really low as well. So I think there's might be influenced by the comparable of four conflicts in context. Because you see the first tone is high, but the third tone is low. So there might be a, a lot of carryover effects of that uh, for any situation. And also, this is the second tone. You can see the accuracy of the second tone is, is not as good as the first tone, especially about the learner groups. You see, it's very low. And then is the third tone. The tone three. Recombination is not included because the phonological variance. So, and also you can see the third tone is the lowest perception. And also, yeah, the first tone is higher across all the perception counts. So it's a higher than it's a uh, it's the high low tone. So uh, the tone effect is very significant, and the group there is a lot of significant difference among the groups. And we got the dissyllabic second tone syllable, so we will follow the same similar format. So this is when the, uh, the high tone appears at the second syllable position, and the preceded is for uh, the high tone, low high tone, low tone, and high low tone. So preceded by this four tone. So we can see that it is it's okay, right? The accuracy rate is pretty high. And then that's when the low high tone appears at the size of the second single tone. You can see that when the combination is low high tone and low high tone is really low. And low tone and low high tone is comparatively high. And so this is for the Third tone and fourth tone. So uh, the tone effect is very significant, and the group effect is also very significant. And also, there is strong interactions between the tone and so uh, comparing across different syllable and positions. So the accuracy of monosyllables is really as predicted higher than the decibels, but the dissyllabic first syllable tone is not as predicted. It's higher than the dissyllabic second tone. So we can see across that the monosyllable and dissyllabic force. You can see the first tone is really encouraged and second tone that as well. And that's the dissyllabic second syllable tone. So why? So that, that's the real question. I really cannot. Uh, Answer because according to the carryover effect, we have just seen that when it is appeared the what the second syllable it receives more carryover effect. Why the accuracy is still very high, and also you can see the different significant results. So what about the compatible and conflicting content? So the compatible. Uh, in the accuracy of compatible is really higher than the complete high content. And you can see here, this is different groups, and this is the 
move on is the compatible complex, and the green line is the complex. So we can see the compatible line is higher than the complex line. And also, there's learning effects as well, because the gap between the compatible line and complex accuracy mean is narrowing down with more learning experience. And what about some of the the last as you can tell. Then what about the last one? Uh, these last one, second one. So we can see that it's not as strong as the first one, right? So the, yes, the compatible tone perception accuracy is higher, but it's not that different. So it's not really significant. So that's the references and so do you have any questions? I have a question about your interpretation of the different kinds of effects that you observed. So then at the the main effect of the tone could tell you, okay, that some tones are harder to identify accurately than others. And the main effect of group would tell you that um, that learning uh, different levels of learning or experience in learning makes a difference. What would you make of the interaction in the cases that you did see interaction effects? Uh, I, I see that I assume there for the for the high tone, low high tone, low tone, and high low tone, their learning sequences is different among different. So that's why the high interaction. So their accuracy uh, perception improves at different states, at different cases. So uh, you can see here the one they are in the monosyllables. Uh, you can see the third tone is no matter in the position is equally different for all the groups. But for the first tone, so you can see there's a big jump from here. So that's for the first year and second year student and third year student. They improve a lot. And then here, second tone as well. They when they are first year and second year they are pretty much the same. And then third year they improve a lot. And also here there are also greater improvement among the third tone as well. So you can see the orange line is higher level. And then the first year really have just come over it. So I, my answer is they have different learning phases in terms of tone learning. So whether it's high, low, high, high, low, or low. So they are quite a different. The question I have is so one possible explanation for this is that they're learning, but because you're doing a cross sectional thing, it's also possible it could be a self selection effect. And then maybe like the students who are better at this are more likely to go on to third year Chinese, and the students who are bad at it might decide to study a different language. Yeah, I think, yeah, that's a really good question. I think, yeah, because my three groups is all from different schools, and they're all different, it's not longitude to study. So what we really should do is observe one group of people and track it, and whether that effect will happen. Yeah. I think actually for the following study, I'm interested in the tone, in dissolable tone perception, and also what about the production, and what about the link to the perception and production. So how that will just uh, give us more insights. So I, in the future study, I will Uh, different levels is first year. Uh, yeah, they all uh, they all a student from Indiana University. So we have uh, first year students who completed one uh, semester, uh, two semesters of first level training. You didn't have any very high professionals. No, no. No, I cannot recruit enough of the participants because I want each group about 10 and also exclude 
the really heritage students and bilingual students. Okay. Um, so, how did you really come to this? But I, I don't recall. Um, so, with the dice words, they heard the full dice syllable sequence and they were asked. What was the tone of the first syllable, or what was the tone of the second? Yeah, in different blocks. They would love them. Yes, so there in total, there's three blocks. <laughs> so the uh, monosyllable, that's the first tone syllable, and that's the second tone syllable. So the three blocks for each of the participants is randomized, and each, within each of the blocks, the item number is also randomized. I'm wondering, um, and did you did you check to see whether in Chinese there are coincidences with a different tone? Yes, I did. And so are there? Uh, I typically select ma and ya syllables and the appearance, the frequency of the syllables, and also into for individual tone with the syllables. It's all pretty much the same. It's all half frequency. So there will now be. But in the in the. Um, in two syllable words, it's treated except for all nonsense words. No, yeah, all nonsense. And they're they're all created from those two syllables, yes. non syllable and non syllable. Yes. But then over the entire lexicon of Chinese, mm -hmm. disyllable compounds are some tone one to two sequences more common than other tone one to sequences, such that that might. I, I would doubt that that would affect your language learners because they don't know, you know, they haven't been exposed as much, but for the native speakers at night, maybe for the language learners, what's more important is to ask that question for the um, vocabulary that they've been introduced to in their language. But if they've had lots of examples of tone one and tone two, but they've only heard tone one and tone three a few times, for example, yeah. that, that might. Uh, favor their response. So they might like their responses, of course. Yes. They might like hear things more yeah. yeah. I, I, I just look at the syllables, each, the frequencies of each syllable tone. So I do not really know for sure how to write it. I don't know that that's a great thing for action. Can you engage in any model criticism regarding the statistical models that you use? Are there other, are there yeah. other things that you would like to do with your data? Yes, just I think yeah. I think we talked about it. Actually, Professor Shasti told me that uh, <laughs> yes, great uh, give me a lot of insight. Um, really uh, the ANOVA should be used here or not. So I uh, actually uh, as just is not really a good model to judge a binary decision things because they really get if they answer it right it's one point. If they answer it wrong it's zero. So it's a kind of the base out is binary. So what they really use is binary logistic regression model thing. But here I just use a NOLA because I <laughs> What's the difference in the variable? I thought it was accuracy. It was like a percent accuracy. Yeah, but I think the. Is the. Is this here? The. Accuracy. Accuracy meaning error cabinet reaction. So the accuracy when you vary is from the error cabinet. Yes, but I also interested in. Not really give it zero uh, is how what what was the zero what they different to confuse the way. So if they is if they hear a third tone answer incorrectly as a third tone, so that's the one one accuracy is one. But they listen to it the listen to the third tone and they answer it as second tone, so they got three. And so is the I Aggregate across the data, so I got so zero, twenty-five, seventy-five percent, and five So that's all how I can use a number instead of the primary analysis. Oh, so it's not a percent. I just remember something. 
No, no, it's, the data itself is not version, but they just put it as 0 and 1. Okay, I have to decide. Were they just like normalized with time or they probably forgot to? Oh, yeah. What the characters did you do? Yes, the, the stimuli is normalized with the PLLSD, the package in the R, in the plot. They adjusted the duration and the P, the rhythm. Because I think the, the tones can have different times. Right, so right. So if you normalize, then I wonder if that's going to be because I think the, the tone four, the falling one, can be very short. Whereas the rising one normally takes a longer. But it's not the same as the rising one. Yeah. 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 A long term, they have more impression if they can get right than the short term. That might be one of the factors. But,